Um, welcome, Jose, to the iMarketing podcast. So good to have you. And congratulations in your new role as a man- managing director Thank of you. Dynamo East Africa. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking forward to this conversation because it's going to touch on you know new, new and emerging technologies or some that are already there and how we can apply that you know in what we do around Africa. So Jose, you've been in the industry for many years and have a wealth of knowledge in you know the media planning and buying space across um, East Africa. What excites you most about AI and machine learning? Well, firstly, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I think what excites me the most is just how easy it's going to make our lives. And there are different facets, especially from a marketing, overall marketing perspective that AI has touched and has continued to enhance our, um, let's call it ways of working within the marketing field. Um, I think we, just to look at the different pillars in which um, AI and machine learning has, has assisted us as marketers, as when it comes to personalization. Now, one of the things that marketers always refer to is how can we efficiently speak to our consumers? How can we speak to our consumers in a tone that they are um, better that, that is better suited to them? And I think with uh, with AI and machine learning, what it does is that it enables real time um, generation of content. It allows real time generation or cam- optimization of that particular content, um, even from a creative perspective as well as from a narrative perspective. So we are able to, using AI and the technology that it, uh, that it brings, being able to more effectively communicate with our audiences um, and then also continuously um, enhance that, um, let's call it a first touch point as we continue getting uh, user data. And and let's just take a step back. What exactly is machine learning? So in a nutshell, uh, machine learning is using data in order to enhance and better the overall experience. Okay. So as an example, if um, I as a consumer am interested in, let's call it the BMW brand, or for, for, for the sake of this, uh, of, of this discussion, um, a Johnny Walker brand. Okay. Right, I as an individual know that I am going to be online um, during my free time, during my lunch, um, most likely um, after work, um, uh, on my way home. And using machine learning, the algorithm would take my user behavior and know exactly when to talk to me, how to talk to me, and what narrative to use in order for me to engage. So in a nutshell, machine learning takes my user behavior and it would use that information to better communicate with me. Okay, and then how does that differ from AI? So artificial intelligence, it takes it a step further. Okay. So as an example, machine learning looks at my habits. Okay. Artificial intelligence takes it a step further by looking at my interests. Okay. It looks at, um, as an example, what am I doing, but also how am I doing it? Why am I doing it? What is happening within either my vertical or with me personally? That, And using that information, artificial intelligence would then better communicate with me. So it's just taking it a step further, making it more personal. Okay. And when we speak about personalization, um, you know, we've I'm sure you've heard people saying, you know, is the internet listening to my phone conversations? <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, I was online searching for X and then suddenly now I'm just being bombarded or yeah. followed with ads. Is that what AI and ML do? Yes and no. Okay. Okay. So I, I think let me first address um, your first point on us as consumers thinking that the internet is listening. So the short answer is yes. And we don't realize it, but it's happening. We're almost uh, immune to it. It's become that 
part of our um, daily lives. Um, we have things such as um, tools and, and technology such as Siri on um, on your Apple phone, um, Bixby on your Samsung phone. Um, when you want to voice search <coughs> for anything within Google, that is all listening tools. So by understanding that l listening is picking up on key words, and I know this is going to sound like an SEO conversation, but it's to an extent not, um, in a nutshell, the internet is listening, but it's taking those keywords and those um, long tail keywords and then using that information to give you exactly what it is that you want. So it's all around personalization. I, I cannot stress this enough. It is all around personalization. And personalization is great, but I'm sure brands are wondering how do you do it at scale? Right. How do yeah. you be able to reach, you know, that you know, we're all going after mass reach, mm -hmm. but how do we get personalization at scale? How do these tools help us get there? So I, I think where the, tech, where the AI technology is leading us to is, is personalization at scale. Okay. So as an example, well, one of the biggest problems that we have as, as marketers is that we are clustering individuals based on a... Um, let, let, let me give you a real world example. Um, I am interested in the BMW brand, but I might be interested in the X5. As a BMW brand, they would never know that I'm interested in an X5 unless they are uh, pushing out communication that is speaking to that. Um, where AI would take it a step further is I'm interested in the BMW brand, again, personalization, interested in the BMW brand, I'm interested in the X5. I'm interested in the color white. I'm interested in um, a four-wheel drive. I know that um, AI would inform the brand that I have a family of two girls. And this would mean that from a customization perspective of the X5, this is what they would recommend. So this is the level of detail that AI is bringing to personalization. And where is all that data coming from? So before, you know, as, as media people, we're, we're reliant on third-party cookie data. Yeah. So now where is, where is AI picking all this data from? So a, a, as, as you might know, um, we are moving, well, hopefully soon. Um, Google has yet to confirm. We've, we've been saying, <laughs> they've been saying that for years. For years, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the um, end of cookie data. But um, so we are moving away from um, cookie data being stored within your browser right. or on your local machine to um, web-based um, data storage right now with web-based data storage it means that the information lasts longer it means that it's um, unless there is a server purge of information your data will remain there and it's still relevant okay our user habits do not change to an extent that um, I'm moving from being interested in um, in CPA to now interested in online banking, and, and, and I don't want a local bank at all. So because there isn't that huge variation of uh, my user behavior, the data will always be true to a certain extent. Okay. So by now that we have a very trustworthy, trustworthy source of information, AI can leverage off that information. Okay. Um, which means that the information that is being passed through to either the platform that you're doing your media buying in or to the um, DMP of choice of the brand, the information will always be relevant. Okay. So what specifically, sh you know, should advertisers be looking to leverage of AI to enhance their, you know, the way they connect with consumers? Um, I know advertisers are always looking for efficiencies. Mm -hmm. How can AI deliver that? So when it comes to efficiencies, I'm, I'm going to speak specifically on efficiencies and uh, within um, the advertising um, realm. Yeah. Now, efficiency means that, and I'll give you a real-world example, we analyze data on a almost um, weekly basis because we know that we need at least a week's worth of data to know that that data is relevant, the, um, the, the, the data pool means that we can actually start making um, de uh, business decisions. And that is when we, it's only at that point, after a week's worth of data, that we are then able to uh, make decisions. 
right? With AI, it analyzes that data and optimizes on the fly. What it means is that from a, an efficiency perspective, there is less human intervention. That campaigns, as an example, are being optimized based on what I want the end goal to be, okay. which means that we can reach the end goal much quicker. It means that we are saving valuable uh, US dollars on media spend. Right. And it means that we can extend our goals, business goals, as well as digital objectives, even further. If we have a goal of, let's say, 10x um, on our, um, let's call it audience reach, we can now turn 10x into 20, 30, 40. The, 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 the opportunities are almost endless. Okay. And artificial intelligence would allow us to actually reach that point of, um, of marketing. Okay. So let's talk about some real life, you know, use cases in AI in action, particularly what you've been able to see um, that, you know, three organization at Dynamo. Can you share anything specific um, that you've seen in action in Africa that we can relate to? So I, I think I'm going to answer that question by telling you what we are currently working on. Okay. Right. So um, we know that there are three particular pillars uh, within a within a u within a user um, that would dictate how we actually communicate with them. Okay. Uh, the first is um, the interest. Um, the second is the brand affinity that they have, and the third, and which is qu um, actually uh, quite popular within East Africa and especially Kenya, is what type of influencer are they getting all of their information from? Now, taking that into consideration, um, we know that we have AI tools that would allow us to create an image, text to image. We know that there are AI tools where we can determine what a particular user's interests are. And then we have um, tools, uh, a very well-known um, influencer tool currently that is uh, within the market that would allow us to ascertain which are the top um, influencers uh, within this particular vertical. Now, what we are taking all of that um, different technology into, um, into consideration, we are currently working on a white-labeled platform which we are going to be um, hopefully sending out quite soon to, to different agencies and brands, um, if they are interested, which would allow any particular creative to be produced on the fly and tailored towards the consumer. Now, I'm going to give you a very uh, a silly example, but it uh, brings across um, the, the technology uh, quite easily. Um, Imagine you are interested in um, a brand such as uh, Coca-Cola, right? And um, you are Catholic, which means that you have very close ties to the Pope. And um, you are following um, a very well-known influencer. For the sake of this uh, discussion, I won't be specific on names. Um, imagine seeing you are on Facebook, you see an ad of the Pope drinking a Coke, having a conversation with an influencer that you are following, and the messaging is specific to you. What it would mean is that the, a particular brand can communicate to you how you want to be communicated based on your interests, and most importantly, the click-through rates or the engagement rates are going to be so high because it's what it is that you want to see. It's engaging with you when you want to be engaged and it's speaking to you in the way you want to be spoken to. So using AI, again, coming back to, um, to personalization, um, that's a tool that we are currently uh, currently working on and I will, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> as soon as Thank it you, launches. looking forward to that. And it's interesting that you, you brought in the influencer piece into you know, this whole thing because um, we know that consumers, people believe other people mm -hmm. and they may not necessarily believe brands all the time. And I think that's why influencer marketing has become so powerful. Yeah. Um, but um, my question, now just being the, the whole AI influence there, are influ how can influencers leverage the power of AI, um, especially in this, in this market, um, in East Africa, in Africa, where 
uh, while influencer content and influencers are on the rise, mm -hmm. I think there's still another level that influencer marketing needs to get to for it to really be efficient and effective for brands yeah. to leverage. Yeah. So specifically <coughs> on, on influencers, I think where influencers would be able to leverage off um, AI technology is that they'd be able to get much more user data. Okay. Meaning, as an example, if if I'm an influencer and I have a particular tone, I have uh, I shoot my content in a particular. Um, I'm a brand essentially. What it would mean is that I now will be able to get more enhanced to user information, which I can then use to dictate the type of content that I am pushing out. Essentially, what it would mean is that by using AI influencers has an opportunity to grow their audience they will also be able to know on which platforms is going to that i can leverage off using ai technology to grow my audience following even faster also um using ai technology you'd be um, an influencer would be able to um, to ascertain is this the correct type of content i need to be pushing out now mm. Should I be focusing on, again, what is happening locally or internationally mm. and how can I use that information to better communicate with my audience? So I wouldn't see it as, um, from an influencer perspective, I wouldn't see AI as um, trying to replace me, mm. as an example. It's more using the technology that I'd be able to leverage off to grow me as a brand. Uh, my followership, my engagement rates, my total amount of engagements. Interesting. So I'm hearing you saying it would enable them to make better data-driven decisions, mm -hmm. you know, not be tone deaf, to be, you know, to just basically get insights about what's working and improve their content and ability to reach people, you know, reach their audiences in a more personal manner. That's interesting. And speaking about, you know, jobs is ai going to which jobs is AI going to wipe out that, that's a million dollar question everybody's as, asking so let me ask you that as well look who should be worried you, you know when um myself as as a marketing um leader and expert as soon as ai started um, becoming more prevalent um my immediate thoughts went to oh goodness is this going to replace jose and after getting to know and getting to while well, getting to know AI, the technology itself, um, using the technology, I've actually realized that AI is not here to replace me. AI is here to help me do a better job. So as an example, um, when I am when I need to do a particular strategy for a particular brand, across a, uh, with um, sorry across maybe different verticals or a specific vertical i would be able to use ai to get a better understanding of that vertical without having to make five phone calls send out 10 emails speak to a third party that has access to this particular data and what would have taken a week or two weeks to do a proper strategy is now taking me one two days what it means is that as a marketer, I am now leveraging artificial intelligence to assist me to do my job more efficiently. I am also raising the bar in terms of quality. My clients now know that if they should ask me for any bit of information, that they've never been either, um, that that information has never been available to them, I am now able to provide that information and more. Um, giving my clients further insights, making them aware of whatever nuances is happening at this particular time. And that in itself um, has um, enabled me to do a much better job, to offer a much um, better service, a much um, higher level of service yeah. uh, to my clients. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, I, I hear, especially for knowledge workers, that productivity pieces is, is something AI is, is going to be able to deliver. But what about for creatives? You know, mm -hmm. um, you've seen a lot of, you know, artwork being developed by AI. What does that mean for, you know, designers, animators, create, you know, basically the creative industry? Well, I think the, the biggest point that, um, that is where AI is affecting uh, creatives is from a cost perspective. 
So as a way I see the um, the biggest gain for a creative, as let's call it a creative agency, um, utilizing AI, especially speech to, to image um, AI, um, they are going to be saving so much money on firstly sourcing the creative content. Um, they're going to save so much time on actually developing the creative content. Um, and they'd be able to use all of those, or we're using AI from a creative perspective, and we all know that this is currently a quite a big issue in Kenya, is getting the creative out efficiently and on time. Why did you call out Kenya? <laughs> <laughs> Tell the, us. The, the, the marketing. What, is, what has been your experience with creative delivery? <laughs> um, with, with, without being too direct. Uh, <laughs> be direct. And the, and the industry <laughs> is quite small, so I need to be very careful <laughs> of what I say. You don't have to name any names. <laughs> but no, what have you seen? What, has, what have been the challenges? The, the biggest challenge <clears> has <throat> been from brief to conceptualization to actual creative rollout. Yeah. AI will assist from con from um, brief to rollout. It does the conceptualization piece automatically because you'd be able to, as from a creative perspective, tell artificial intelligence, this is what I want. And what you want from a creative agency is already briefed to you by client. So from that perspective, what would have taken two weeks, three weeks, is now again taking a week. And the longest part, I feel, from during that entire process, is going to be advertiser approving the content. Because the amount of content you can now produce within the same period of time is going to be triple, quadruple what you have been doing currently. But let's go back to the briefing. You know, they say garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> and, yeah. you know... Let, let's call it a spirit speed. Our, you know, the brief, you know, mm -hmm. the way briefs are written, um, not, you know, in various industries, is not always adequate yeah. to a point where when you see the finished work, I question, I'm like, what was the brief in the first place? Mm. So how can AI also help brands write better briefs? So I think it all depends on who is adopting AI technology first so you have your brand and then you have your your agency as an example right now if brand is adopting ai quicker than what agency is and if that's the case that's a big problem but if that is the case ai would be able to assist brand in delivering better briefs more um, in detail briefs mm -hmm. because now from a brand perspective you'd be able to align your digital output based on your business objective. Right. And because you are using AI, you are being more in detail to how to achieve your brand objective via your digital communication, as all, via your marketing communication, sorry. Right. So taking, taking that into consideration, briefs are, the level and detail of briefs are automatically going to go up a couple of levels. Because now I am being extremely granular in my brief. It is directly speaking to what I need to achieve from a business perspective. And as soon as an agency uh, or whichever um, entity receives that brief, they know exactly what to do. So there's efficiencies across the board. Um, and because of that efficiency, it saves time. It means that if something is not working, um, in that brief, you can quickly, while well, you are being, you are agile enough to make um, any particular decisions on the fly. Yeah, I certainly hope that's you know what we'll be able to see and <laughs> yeah. um, as we roll out AI. Okay, so speaking of content creation or content development, then how how does AI or even machine learning help with now optimization of that content? Because mm -hmm. again, at the end of the of the day. Uh, optimized content is usually cheaper for media to run, isn't mm -hmm. it? You get your efficiencies. And from an effectiveness point of view, it would have more impact to the end user. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's, you also need to look at what the current process is from a content or well, content and creative perspective and how artificial intelligence would be able to make it more efficient. So as, as a marketer, <clears throat> as soon as a campaign starts rolling out, right 
you then start analyzing the data. As soon as you start analyzing the data from a creative perspective, you then understand what is working and what is not. Generally, you have between three, four, five different pieces of content that you are um, punting to the industry or to the market um, at, at a particular time. And based on the creative performance, you would then get a better understanding of this is resonating with my audience and this is not. So what should, what should you be looking for as a marketer to understand if it's working or not? It all depends on what your objective is. Okay. So, as an example, if I'm doing a brand awareness perspective, um, a campaign mm-hmm. um, with that particular objective, I'd be looking at how many eyeballs is actually seeing my content. Okay. I want as many people to see my content and to know my brand as possible. Right. And you would um, gain, the, or you would understand the performance based on the amount of impressions that are being served, again, from a digital perspective, the amount of impressions that is being served, um, the CPM that I, the CPM rate that I'm achieving, cost per mil, um, cost per thousand impressions. Okay. Um, and that is, from that objective, you would then get, you would see, okay, this particular creative is, is everybody loves this one. Yeah. Then from... And like, how long should you wait once you start running? Is it after three days, a week, a month? Without... So if you're only implementing artificial intelligence from a creative perspective, anything between three days and a week, business week, okay. would suffice. Okay. However, and however, if you are implementing AI from a campaign perspective, anything more than two days is sufficient. Okay. Again, this is what AI brings to the party in terms of efficiency. It means that it can be extremely granular in its, in its data um, and analysis. Um, but specifically on creative, right? As soon as um, you have that um, data um, data pool, um, uh, data information, you'd be able to then, using AI, create or um, yeah, construct creatives on the fly. Meaning, this is my input, this is what I need. This creative is working, give me two or three versions of this which is working which means that you are giving your audience what they want, what resonates with them. Right, right. Interesting. Um, you've shared, you know, a, a lot of not a, a lot of information around AI. Could you tell us what, what do you do personally to stay current on these, you know, new and emerging technologies? What advice would you give to, you know, not just a young upcoming marketer, but even experienced marketers on staying on top of things? Yeah, so this is something that I've been um, doing for as long as I can remember, and I make extensive use of Google Alerts. So, as an example, um, via Google Alerts, I would ask Google to pop me an email as soon as within this particular market, within this particular field, this keyword is, um, is tagged or hit. Um, Google Alerts would then send me, email me a list of five, six different links to the information that I actually want. Um, to give you a, a very simple example, if within a Google Alerts um, I entered or ask Google, listen Google, I want to be told as soon as um, the VAT percentage increases in, in Kenya. Um, what Google Alerts would do is that it would scour the internet uh, or the content within Kenya um, specific to Kenya and looking for these particular keywords and it would immediately send me an email on well based on the frequency that I want it would send me um, an email on the most latest um, technology um, the most sorry not technology the most latest link to the content that I'm looking for All right now this is what I use from an AI perspective across creative across AI as a whole machine learning um oh, there's so many different um ai lists that i currently have but that is what i use to stay current um i don't know when the content is going to come out so i use a leverage off a google um, google's algorithm to send me the information when i want it um and how as frequently as what i want it. yeah that's 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 very smart. I I use Google Alerts, but not f- to that extent. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely be adjusting my my keyword searches. Okay, so if, if we think about um, the application of AI in our African markets, 
which I, I believe is still in you know the early stages. Um, what do we need to do to make sure that the 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 platforms we're using in our own uh, generative AI are relevant to what our audiences, what our consumers, what our brands need here in Africa? I think what we first need to ascertain is how how can AI be applied to our daily lives, and th- there needs to be as you know as marketers we know that there needs to be demand and then supply, and currently. AI is at that point of there is a demand, but currently not that much supply. Mm. Um, As an example, we all want to buy 4K TVs, Mm -hmm. you know, up to 4K resolution. But is there enough 4K content? Mm. You know, it begs the question of, am I actually, or what is the point of buying this? Is Is it a vanity purchase? Right. You know, so using that type of analogy or reference point, we all want to use AI, but how is it being implemented? We all have these amazing ideas, but how do we bring it to fruition? So I, I know I'm, I'm I'm being very gen, uh, generic or general in my in my in my response, but the the crux of the of the matter is with artificial intelligence is that if we are not ut- utilizing artificial intelligence well um and responsibly the demand for ai is never going to be quelled is never going to be satisfied and technology needs to or the output of the technology needs to um advance to the point where we can actually see the efficient benefits and believe it or not ai is not only restricted to the digital you know realm you know um things such as uh, banks are using it for fraud detection Mm. um as an example right and it all got it, it all has to do with you know efficient usage of ai technology in our daily lives that would be able to supply the demand okay it, it reminds me just going back um, probably, I don't know, many, many years ago where Google in Kenya uh, used to pay content creators like newsrooms mm-hmm. to create content so that they could be local content. When you went online and Googled, you know, this is probably like 20 years ago, mm. and Googled Kenyan news, um, then nothing would really come up. You'd be redirected to an international site. So at that time, Google actually went to a lot of the publishers in Kenya and said, um, let's partner so you can create content and put it online. Mm -hmm. Because most of the publishers of the newsrooms were offline. They were on radio, they were on TV, they were on print. They hadn't prioritized going online. Is that something that we need, like, is... Is that something like we need to do as well in Africa? What, you know, deliberate efforts do we need to make so that it's contextually it's relevant for us? I think the um, and this is speaking purely on a content uh, perspective. Yeah. If you must go onto TikTok currently, the amount of Kenyan TikTok content creators is extremely small, but the amount of Kenyan users on TikTok is extremely high. Okay. Now, using AI technology, and I'm just talking from a content creation perspective, I don't want to use the word influencers here, that we are all content creators. Yeah. Um, using AI to push out content more efficiently, but also more relevant, would be able to, again, supply the Kenyan users with Kenyan content. Okay. So now the content that is being pushed to these platforms using artificial intelligence technology is going to be relevant. And the the content is just going to be, I mean, if we use AI technology efficiently and to our, um, to our betterment, we'd be able to actually see what we want to see. I've got zero interest, and I, I'm, I'm a South African living in Kenya, but I've got zero interest in seeing American content. I want to see Kenyan content. And using AI technology would be able to, would allow me to actually see what I want. Yeah. Because the content creators would be able to put out content faster. Yeah. 
Okay, and I mean, we've talked about all the benefits of AI, you know, for the for media, for advertising, for brands. Um, but what are the potential risks you see around AI, especially because it's still a platform in its early stages? We don't know, you know, what risks or opportunities yeah. are there. <laughs> so what comes to mind? So, as an example, we all we are all familiar with ChatGPT. Yeah? Yes. Now, Chat ChatGPT is a AI technology that is going to give you information based on your input. So the output is based on the input, yeah. which is all user or human initiated. Yes. If we aren't careful with our inputs, Lord knows what we're going to get as an output. So we need to be extremely responsible in the type of questions that we are asking based on the answers that you want. So there needs to be very, very clear lines of, you know, being responsible um, and also to an, obstet- uh, to, 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 to an, to an extent um, just using common sense when it comes to using AI technology. And speaking of input, um, you know, one of, is, is it a risk where maybe you'd be putting in maybe your brand or you represent an organization and you're putting in content that is confidential? Maybe yes. it's your business plan. Exactly. Is that a risk? Definitely. Who, who will is. get that information? So this is, uh, for, for those of you who do not know, um, AI is to an extent just a very advanced machine that is learning based on what you feed it. If you are feeding information that is going to speak to, con- that is um, that is confidential information, you are making that information available for somebody else, even your competitor, um, available to see based on their input. <coughs> so ah. your input is going to be turning into, might be turning into somebody else's output. I see. That's so, a good point. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, as, um, you know, representing a dynamo, I do not want to ask AI, oh, please tell me how to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to find this, uh, an example. Now. Yes. Um, I'm not going to ask AI or chat, chat GPT, my input, to be, um, can you please tell me how I can increase my salary of X to salary of Y. I don't want anybody to know that information, right? I also don't want to ask AI to do something that I'm supposed to do for my um, for my clients to an extent or being client specific because my clients' competitors can then So how do you make sure your employees, if, you know, your business owner, your employees are not going into chat GPT and putting in company confidential information to help them do their work better. So that's the risk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked to legal about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. As, as an organization, we need to be, um, we need to be responsible and we need to educate um, our team members. Yeah. Um, we need to educate the industry on how to use chat GPT responsibly. Yeah. Um, a lot of big organizations are creating their own company specific chat GPT because they know that the information, any confidential information will stay within the company. Yeah. Um, you do not want to run that risk at all. And um, if, you, if you go that route of creating your own internal chat GPT or text um, AI technology, it's going to assist as an organization to, um, to keep what is confidential, to keep confidential and st- what needs to stay confidential. Correct, yeah, all right. That's it from me. Thank you so much, um, Jose. It's been a really interesting discussion. I've definitely learned a lot. But wait, we have one more question from mm. our very, very amazing producer. Mm-hmm. Uh, describe the future of advertising using AI in Africa with one word. It's a word that we've been using quite often um, during this pod- uh, during this discussion. Personalization. That yeah. is one word that I think is going to resonate for the next f- three to five years uh, within the marketing space. Um, the one actually it addresses the biggest problem that we've had 
is how personal can we be with our communication? Now we have a tool that would be able to do it for us on the fly, based not on what we think, but based on user input, based on user behavior. So yeah, everything is going to be personalized. Fantastic. So let's drink to that. Asante Sana. Cheers, Asante Sana. <laughs>